Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel here in Brick Township, New Jersey. One of my viewers, John, was in the area today and he had uh, messaged me to uh, come check out his Jeep. He's got a lot of really cool things on his Jeep that he modified. He's more of a car camper, so we really haven't covered this on the channel. We've done a lot of trailers and vans and schoolies and buses, but uh, John's gonna show us inside and out all the modifications he's done to make it work for his lifestyle. John, welcome to New Jersey Outdoor Adventures. Thanks for having me, Patrick. All right, I'm Johnny Mac, and uh, this is Yeti, the uh, 2008 Jeep Wrangler JK uh, UR, so that means it's the four-door uh, with all the lockers and all the off-road goodies. Its name Yeti comes from the original owner. We called him Teddy the Yeti. He lived all of his life up in uh, Vermont, so uh, that's where I bought this vehicle from from him. When he passed, I grabbed it off of his estate. So, uh, first things first, on this uh, passenger side passenger door, I have uh, the first section of my cabinetry right here. This is my tool case. This has just got a whole bunch of sundry tools, uh, everything to do um, just basic uh, car repairs, bike repairs, uh, and maintenance of the stuff I have here. Um, right behind uh, here, I made sure I utilized this space behind the seat, so I've got a whole bunch of just uh, shoes and stuff to fit in that L that went to the, um, the footwell. Down here, uh, I just had a whole bunch of other bulky, nasty uh, recovery gear and other stuff like that. So this is just mostly the metal uh, replacement parts for things that you know broke in the Jeep, shackle, things like that. All right, there you go. All right, so right here is the bag I used during the majority of my trip. Here we're gonna see the beginning of my uh, bedding. This whole uh, bedding starts off with a Persian rug that I got off my grandfather when he uh, passed, pulled it out of his house. This was trash originally. Then we've got a self-inflating mattress. This is uh, a one of those really old uh, thermarests. A packing blanket that came from uh, just around the house. This was a uh, one of those wool ones. It's a two-point uh, blanket. Then I have a uh, my sleeping bag. This right here is just a fleece liner bag and a comforter. A nice fleece lined comforter. I bought this from a thrift shop in Syracuse once it started getting cold. Uh, besides that, you can see there's a reflective uh, liner that goes inside of the main sleeping bag. And this whole setup, will, you can take it down to zero degrees if lower. Just make sure whenever you're trying to do cold weather gear, notice that a lot of my insulation is on the bottom, on the bottom, on the bottom. There isn't a whole heck of a lot on top. Whenever you're doing cold weather uh, stuff, you need to make sure that anything that will get compressed, as far as bedding goes, is thicker. There's just more of it. The general rule that whenever I'm working in scouts, I tell the kids is three times as much underneath you as you do on top of you. Uh, once you if once you keep that in mind, you can sleep just about anywhere uh, soundly. Just make sure you keep the, keep it airtight. Alrighty, so uh, up top right here we have uh, my shovel. This is my uh, primary recovery gear. I used it the most on my trip. It's just attached by some uh, quick fist uh, clamps, on, just tied onto the uh, onto the rack behind there. We've got my uh, custom uh, ski box. I've made that because these uh, AEG rooftop boxes don't uh, don't make it easy to put your uh, just other type of rooftop boxes on there. If you're going to be um, putting something on top of this, there's going to be a bar usually that sits on top of this that goes across, makes it so you can't use the interior of this, and then they'll set this whole box up another six inches higher from this already six inch high frame so you're gonna have your box start at a foot taller than your vehicle you can get your vehicle up to nine feet real quick if you uh, don't try and uh, make sure you keep that thing short I want to because I was gonna be taking this off-road all right over to the uh, box itself this is uh, made out of that 
pink insulation foam that you would uh, use to insulate a house. And along the edges, uh, it is fiberglass and glued together with um, the Loctite PL3X construction adhesive. I use that in place of a uh, standard constructing your fiberglass because the expanded polystyrene that this stuff is made out of uh, gets very quickly dissolved by uh, your standard acrylic uh, one or two part epoxies. So uh, then this whole thing right here is uh, what I used to uh, hold my uh, ski gear. I was out in the uh, mountainous west uh, using this. So this right here is a really cool old pair of uh, Karu Carvers, probably older than the car. Uh, set of um, Telmark skis and a uh, snowboard. With this and a pair of uh, skins that I'd use on the tele skis, I could get just about anywhere I wanted to in the backcountry, which was uh, really cool. I think my favorite spot I ever visited was in uh, Yellowstone. Either that or um, just going up and around uh, the Tetons when I was uh, out there. All right, so moving on to the back, we have my uh, custom-made bike rack. The whole idea behind this bike rack was I didn't want to uh, impede my uh, car's ability to go off-roading, so it's uh, as narrow as the car, lifted up off the ground so it's in the wind shadow of the car, uses these Rocky Mountain rip-off uh, uh, quick release mounts that then get attached to this piece of uh, 8020 aluminum. I uh, custom welded these brackets so that this hinge point right here was all the way in line with the hinge of the back tailgate so this whole thing could kind of move as one. The top or the bottom of these tires are high enough so that it doesn't impede the uh, the uh, departure angle of this vehicle, which is set essentially by this little piece of, uh, you know, bump stop that you that you could get uh, to put into the back of your tailgate. So to get this open, what you have to do is start by pulling these pins. Unfortunately, this didn't end up working out as well as I wanted, so nothing works without a little bit of persuasion. Pull that pin, that'll be the hold open pin. This is the hold open or the hold close pin. Pull that out. Give this a little nudge to get it open. That's open. And then just open the whole thing up. And insert the whole open pin. Okay, so that brings us to. Oh, you want to see the inside? There you go. All right, so that brings us to the back of this vehicle, where most of the living uh, got done. This right here is my kitchen. Let's hold open. There you go. So. Looking at it from the passenger side to the driver's side, the whole idea when I designed this was that I wanted to have the longest amount of space possible in this cabinetry sleeping deck uh, section. So I built this whole section where you could uh, send, it, send items all the way forward through to that uh, wall that was right behind the passenger seats. Inside here, uh, you have the things that if you go camping, the first things you'd want to set up would be your sleeping uh, equipment or your seating. So that's what's in here. We'll see. Here's a chair. This could just get set up right here, like so. There you go. Then if it's hot and you don't want to sleep inside of the car, uh, you can pull out your my warm weather sleeping equipment. This right here is a Teton Outfitters um, I believe they call it their base camp cot. You, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, 
this thing's massive when you uh, do end up folding up I'm not gonna do it on camera it takes forever uh, it's about the size of a twin mattress but the important part of this because I wanted to keep this fast is the tent that pairs directly with that how that works Pull it open, get it out of its little wrapper, sort out the rain fly, there we go, and it's done. That's it. That's the whole setup. That would go right there, sit on top of my and be ready to sleep outside in warm weather. In cold weather, I'd sleep inside though. Much better wind barrier and uh, wind break. All right, so right here we have uh, my kitchen set up. You know, the most important things that you're going to be doing any day whenever you're camping is going to be eating, sleeping, and going to the bathroom. So uh, this right here is the eating, and you can see the sleeping requires no setup. So if I want to go into a camp, say at dusk, I'll be able to eat, have my, um, you know, have a nice meal, cook, cook it all, clean it all up, and go to bed in probably the order of about uh, 30 minutes if I have a 15-minute meal. So this all just comes out. This is my full uh, camp setup for cooking. It's got just about everything you need in here, minus a stove. And then right here, we have uh, my Coleman uh, stove. That just comes out here. Pop it open. Set it up on this edge. Put the feeder. Drop our propane tank right here. Nice little prep space. You can cook right here. And if I felt that I needed to do something that was more involved, I'd use my fold-out table. So now that we see that, we'll get to this uh, compartment right here. So if anyone's familiar with the architecture of the tub of a uh, Jeep JK or later, there is a bit of a compartment right in here that you can access uh, if you're in the back. There's a fold-up little... Uh, flooring well I didn't want to lose access to that I wanted to make sure I kept all the space in this vehicle so I actually made it so you can get to that I replaced that with a piece of wood and now you can get into that same compartment and put whatever you want I'm probably gonna put an air compressor or the air compressor tank later but for right now it's just holding stuff like uh, spare parts Nothing special. Get this back together. There we go. Right here I have uh, the factory equipment as far as recovery gears. Uh, this right here is the jack. The jack, the jack equipment. Can't fix a flat. And if anyone familiar with this uh, 3.8 uh, V6, those things uh, burn oil, so. Well, mine isn't too bad. You gotta always make sure you keep a can of, kick of, uh, of oil in the thing at all times. Put this back in. All right, so now that I showed you my kitchen, I'll show you uh, the rest of my bed and my sleeping quarters. So right here we have an inverter and some custom electrics I set up. This runs out with some uh, burial uh, Bromex. That's gonna be eight gauge, so I didn't have too much uh, voltage drop. Right here would be my uh, shop light. This I would uh, either hook up on the edge or some uh, hang it somewhere on the inside and have that plugged directly into my inverter as my primary light currently have this disconnected so I'm not uh, draining too much of the power on this. Then we can go uh, further up. This right here is kind of my uh, random soft bits section. I'd have in here um, another tent for backpacking. My uh, 
insulation so this is a bunch of uh, down parkas and and rain jackets and stuff like that and then the dirty laundry would just get shoved in here in a uh, laundry bag moving over to the other side uh, for any of you guys who uh, want to go camping and have glasses please make sure you have a place to put your glasses at night because if you don't rolling over them on uh, is a great way of breaking them and you don't want to do that when you're camping right here I have just some of my um, Stuff that I want to get to you know quickly do pocket dumps and I also throw that inside on my uh, Helmet as well keep that on the driver's side so it obscures my uh, vision as little as possible Ironically with this vehicle and this whole setup Seeing out the back of this, I could actually see out better than if I had the back seats. Those things stick up so tall that they obscured more of this than the spare tire did. I did make sure to keep this window open though, because I am going to be going four-wheeling with this. I wanted to make sure that I could see out that uh, window. Just some random soft stuff again, getting stuffed in here. We got a tarp. This right here is an old seat cover I use as a ground cloth if I got to crawl under the vehicle. Uh, and an axe and a pick. Uh, pair that with the shovel and I could do any type of uh, trail maintenance I needed if needs be. All right, so that's the, uh, that's the inside from this side at least. Now we can go over to this uh, awning. So this right here is the smaller of the longer uh, SME built awnings. I think this is just the six footer one as opposed to the eight foot one. <laughs> So the cool thing about this is it's semi-freestanding. As long as you know how to set these things up, they're super simple. First thing you should always do is you take the sections that stick out and you deploy those first. What this will do is this will give you a spot to roll this out on top of and not have to worry about supporting it the whole way out. So you get that out there and then you just roll it out. Once you're all the way to the end, it's much easier to manage. Take it, take the end of these, stuff them in their little slots, tighten it down. Tighten this one down. Hold down the legs. That's how you set one of these type awnings up in about 30 seconds. It's always important to make sure you do that first. If it's ever going to get windy, you can always uh, run from here, stake it down, pull this out and make sure it's nice and taut. But if you're just going to be using this for shade, this is totally uh, good enough. Alright, uh, down here. I have this up on just some uh, blocks to keep it level. That bike rack doesn't really work so well if this thing isn't level or at least leaning that way. All right, so now that we've got this, we can see right here. So behind the driver's side, and this is why I put this all right in here, is my main pantry area. If you're gonna be coming in and out of a, a car while driving, it'd be a really pain uh, to just go and have to set up a whole kitchen in order to get some quick food. So if you wanna make a breakfast of say cereal and uh, milk, you won't have to open up your whole kitchen to get to it. So if you can uh, get it so that it's really close and easy to access, that's gonna be key to making sure that you're not spending excess time working on that. So right here, I've got my uh, water. This right here is nothing special. This is just a Walmart uh, special water tank. I got this, um, I think, out in Moab when my uh, Coglin's uh, flexible one uh, just stopped holding water on me. Put that down there out of the way. So back in here, we have my pantry. Up top, I have the uh, spices and uh, toiletries, nice light stuff, stuff I'll need to get worry about getting into. Then I have all of my dry goods in here. Uh, before I'd have some uh, rice and some beans and stuff like that. It's a little bare as it is. Then we've got the lower section of this pantry, which goes all the way to the center divider on this. So you could fit a whole case of um, like soda, or at least in my case, energy drinks. 
because if I'm camp uh, driving for 10 hours straight, it's a little bit of a pain for me at least to stop and make coffee. But if I do want to make coffee, I made sure that that was one of the things that I kept back here. This, and here's my cup. So right here we have our stove. This is a little backpacking stove. This is one of these uh, butane burners. This one's made by Snow Peak. Uh, this is way before everyone decided that MSR uh, was the only game in town as far as making good ones on these. So this thing's pretty old. You just put that there like that. Take this Stanley brand um, French press, which is really cool. One of the nicest things about this is that the cup that holds your water is also the same one that the uh, strainer goes in. So when you push it down in, the strains can't get past the filter into what you're drinking. I found that at another Walmart too. So you could just uh, boil your water, use that for say a dehydrated meal if you want, you know, or for coffee. Light it with, uh, with my uh, fire steel and uh, you're good to go. I always made sure though that I did this with the door open. You don't want to be uh, dumping too much carbon monoxide into your living space and too much heat. This top is just made of fiberglass and it is pretty close. You'd end up uh, ruining this vehicle if you uh, were uh, not careful about that. All right, so now moving on, we have behind that my fridge or was going to be a fridge turned out to just be a I'm going to get inside to show you this turned out just to be a cooler I was going to install a thermoelectric device but ultimately didn't I found that this was good enough at keeping my fresh vegetables fresh and my meat cool enough that it didn't spoil within a day so you open this up I have this wrapped in that same uh foam that you would use on the uh, outside of your house. This uh, one inch stuff has an R value of I think about seven. And I have this whole setup uh, taped off on the inside. So these different individual containers were a good way of uh, containing the mess. These are about I think what the two and a half uh, gallon trash bins and then you just have one for uh, one for your meats and one for your greens don't want to store those together if you can't help it so you just fill it with ice first and then um, put your contents in I'd fill it with ice if it was uh, warm enough outside to warrant it but uh, I was never keeping anything that long that it really needed a lot of uh, a lot of cool that stuff would keep ice in this for three days if I wanted it but I didn't use ice all that much because it made uh, a lot of a mess but you don't need that much to keep fresh veggies good so then we have right here uh, this is where my uh, clothing would go because you can't camp and stay out on the road for six months without having some clothing so this was going to be the deepest and hardest to get to pocket because clothing, uh, you, if you're smart, you don't have to access this more than once every two weeks. You just make sure you pull your underwear out and have it sitting in a good place. So uh, when I was doing my cross-country road trip all the way out west, I had duffel bags stuffed in here and then some of my bigger clothing sitting on top. Uh, my biggest regret with this whole design was having the hinge orientation on this compartment, not in line with the center axis of the vehicle. It makes it absolutely miserable to get anything in and out of that. So if ever you're trying to uh, um, put something in here, understand that you're gonna have, if you have to reach past the opening, you're probably gonna end up breaking whatever flap that you're on because you'll end up leaning on it. So just going a little further this way as well, you saw that one long compartment had access to it. It would be silly if I didn't um, allow access to the front of that too. So I did the same thing where I uh, made it so that that folded up. In here I've got my bike pump and my solar shower if ever I felt the need to not stink. Those are just simple. You just uh, heat them up with, uh, with water either from the sun or from your, uh, from your stove. 
Now, besides that one problem of having that uh, lid oriented the wrong way, the only other big issue I found with this design is how much room I didn't give myself. The um, Not being able to sit up fully upright is an absolute pain. If anyone's going to be trying to spend any amount of time, if your only options are laying flat or standing up, it becomes uncomfortable very quickly. You always want to make sure you have a good place to sit. Fortunately enough for me, as you can see, all this is made of um, unfinished uh, one millimeter uh, or one centimeter outdoor rated home sheathing. That's that, um, you know, a waterproof plywood that they uh, make. I didn't spend a lot of time making this pretty or look good because uh, the end of today, most of this is going to get torn out. This is only for this trip. I think this whole setup inside of here was I, no more than three sheets of plywood and maybe six or seven uh, ten packs of uh, small two inch uh, brackets that I screwed the whole thing together with. So it went together really quickly uh, and it'll come apart just as fast. And just like on the other side, this L-shaped space, I made sure I made use of that by by putting my uh, ski boots in here. Not sure if you're gonna see that, but just gotta believe me on that. All right, moving on to the cockpit. So all I had in here was a really, really simple setup. I wanted this to be light, fast, and cheap, something that I didn't mind throwing away once I was done with my whole uh, trip. So that's why all this is, is just a cheap little shower caddy that I threw all of my stuff in. Another um, waste paper bin for a trash can. If ever you're spending lots of time on the road, having a place to throw your, your, your wrappers and any of the stuff that, the garbage that you'd end up producing when you're eating stuff, you know, sitting in that chair, having a trash can with you is such an awesome creature comfort. Otherwise it just ends up falling in the passenger footwell and never leaving the car. Up front right here, we, uh, we have the, um, the center of this uh, whole thing. This right here is a uh, Steely made by Night Eyes. This is uh, the one that has a, uh, a phone mount that is expandable so you can put uh, phones in there. And then this also then just sticks onto that. So you can drop your phone in have it um, ready to get clamped up, and if ever reason someone uh, is gonna be calling you or you need to look at something real quick, you can just pop that right off of there. This is all interchangeable without within their whole system, so you could stuff one of these little steel ball bearings just about anywhere on your car you want to have one of these uh, set up. I was really happy when I uh, found that. Other than that, I've got another magnetic uh, spot to put it uh, right here if I had uh, my other phone with me and just a uh, small CB Midland radio that I'd keep with me if ever I needed a radio to talk to someone. On my whole trip through all of the states out west that I was out there, I heard no chatter on this thing. Either my, uh, my range was too small or people just don't use CBs anymore. And from what I've read, it does seem like UHF is what people are going to these days. So that's ham radio for anyone who doesn't know. All right. Uh, oh, one other thing. Both sides, I have um, an underseat uh, lock boxes where I'd put uh, important things like my phone or my um, or my binoculars or something like that. Uh, and is that also, a Tuffy box? I, I, that's the one I have on my Bronco. I think so. Yeah. Um, I also have a couple of these cab keys uh, hidden around my car. If ever I was, was going to go out into the wilderness and go do something uh, really active. You don't need a uh, chipped key to get into most vehicles, but you do need a chipped key to either stop the alarm or start it going. So what I would do is I'd just take this cheap key that's maybe $20 to get remade, and I'd take that with me, leave the real keys in the car. That way, um, if ever you lose this or drop this or something, you're not without a key 300 miles from the next person that could hope to make you a key ever. So I had this there and I have one hidden in another spot in the vehicle. I will not show you that. Alright, so this whole uh, underbody right here is going to be all of the factory uh, skid plates that you normally get with a Rubicon. You're going to notice that this isn't the same color as uh, what you get from the factory. I told you this uh, spent most of its life out in Vermont. 
Well, that meant lots of rust, so I've been spending the last month going through and scaling this whole thing with the needle scaler and applying a uh, rust coating to hopefully keep the car cancer at bay. All right, so now going to the uh, inside. You notice that there was an inverter back there. If you're gonna be uh, trying to car camp out of a vehicle, you don't want to be running your house power from the same thing that you'd be using as your crank battery, especially if it's an automatic. Most people go uh, four-wheeling with an automatic anyway. So try to always find a way to isolate your crank battery. What I have right here is one of the uh, uh, cheap Rugged Ridge dual battery carriers that you'd get for the uh, 2008 JK with an Optima uh, yellow top battery. That's their marine style deep cycle uh, battery. And then this little knob right here is the isolator. This is a, a kill switch that you normally get on a car. I had to bore this out to, sit, uh, to get this to go onto the negative lead for this battery uh, to then uh, isolate this whole thing. But you just close it down and there we go, it's screwed down. Now this battery is hooked to this battery and uh, this is also powering the inverter in the back. I'll open it up. This will still be powering the inverter, but now it won't be draining from this battery. Uh, because these two batteries aren't identical, this one probably will end up draining this one down and killing it, and that's a problem. You want to always make sure you uh, have an isolator of some sort. This right here uh, is that same wire that ran all the way from the back up to the front, and again on the negative uh, lead, I have a... Uh, have a 50 amp uh, inline fuse, so if ever anything goes wrong back there, I'm not gonna start a fire by uh, catching this out. Otherwise, internals are completely stock. I did nothing to this, and I wanted to make sure that I did nothing to this because, you know, I wanted to keep stock reliability. These engines, you know, Jeeps aren't supposed to be known to be super reliable. Besides the uh, oil issue, uh, this Panastar engine is dead nuts reliable. You can run these things for, I've heard, 300,000 miles easily. So this thing's a baby currently sitting at 70. I did 30 of that on my trip, but uh, you know, buying this at around 40, it had about 100,000 miles worth of northeast rust though. Alrighty, so the last couple things to uh, mention are gonna be uh, the things I did on the suspension. Inside here, uh, I've got one of those rubber um, spring stiffeners just to give this front end a little bit more um, strength. Unfortunately, these front ends on these uh, Rubicons from this age really sag badly. Uh, I threw in the red um, poly uh, bump stop to replace the old rubber ones and then you probably can't see it but those are I think some pro comp shocks that I uh, put in the front when the uh, when I got this vehicle the passenger side um, shock mount tore off the bottom due to rust and those bump stops having uh, gone bad so when I replaced the um, shackles or when I replaced those mounts and learned to weld to weld those on I also replaced the front shocks, gave it something that had a little bit more, a little better small bump compliance. I didn't do the rear though. I left those with the Rubicon shocks because those are supposed to have much better large bump compliance and that's more important to have in the rear. Other than that, um, this rear end is standard except for one thing. I have some air ride um, helper springs that go inside of the um, actual coils. So um, when this thing is loaded all the way down to capacity, like this is currently, it's sitting as GVM, uh, this thing would, would have squatted quite a bit and have uh, everything you know pointed straight up. Bad for handling characteristics, bad for uh, ground clearance, and just overall bad for your vehicle, especially if you're coming up and hitting the bump stops a whole bunch. So I just um, tossed a couple of those bags inside. Uh, you can't see it from here. You can see it? Let's go around to this side, you'll be able to see it better. So these big red bags right in here, all these do is these just act as uh, spring stiffeners. You can also see right here uh, is my cat back exhaust. I used uh, that to replace the rotted out suitcase uh, OEM style exhaust. This gave me another, uh, I'd say, two or three MPG on this. So uh, highway, 
fill those uh, airbags up with this individually so you can level the ride while it's going. What inspired you to build a Jeep like this for your trip? Now there's lots of other options out there. There's pop-up campers, travel trailers, RVs, vans. Why, why a Jeep? So um, there are a couple reasons why I chose a Jeep. Uh, number one, I owned the vehicle at the time. Best reason to go uh, road tripping in a vehicle is because it's the vehicle you have. If you can make it work, make it work. Um, the rest of it, I got this, um, of, I used this vehicle because being able to just jump in and out of this uh, made it really simple to, uh, to just live out of it. I didn't have to spend a lot of time setting anything up. Pop up anything requires setup. This required almost none to get to anything. Uh, and lastly, it being all uh, self-contained in this uh, in this single vehicle meant that I wasn't really restricted by uh, where I wanted to go by what I was driving. If I wanted to um, go four-wheeling and find some remote spot to go camping, it was very easy to do uh, in this because the only thing I had to worry about was not crushing my bikes on the back, backing out of a trail or something. Other than that, the rest of this um, was already set up to just go where I wanted. I originally had a 2000 Mercury Mountaineer. I sold that and when I bought this because I couldn't afford owning two vehicles at once, the insurance, gas, and maintenance would kill me. Um, other than that, you know, uh, you know, who doesn't love four-wheeling? If anyone's, you know, ever done it before, you know it's a lot of fun. I took this thing down the entire length of uh, Hell's Revenge um, up to the top of uh, top of the world over in Moab and um, did a, a couple different things. I think my favorite place that I ever went four-wheeling with this was Arches National Park. Uh, if you guys have never been to Arches National Park, it's now my favorite national park, period. And if you got a Jeep, you can go four-wheeling down the trail there. It's a lot of fun. Um, Tell us a little bit more about your trip. You did a 30,000 mile trip. Uh, where did it start and uh, what was your travel itinerary? So uh, my trip, what I did with this, uh, and I kid this and loaded this out for, I wanted this to be a mobile sports platform. So uh, skis on the top, bikes on the, on, the, on the back. This was a way to get out and go and do uh, fun things. I went up the East Coast, uh, visited Boston, made it to Acadia uh, National Park, really cool, camped, in, um, camped there for about a week. That was probably the longest time I stayed, stayed in one space um, while camping. Then uh, made it all the way up the coast to one of those areas that had like 12 foot tides. Drove back over to uh, Baxter, uh, hiked to the top of Katahdin Mountain uh, the day before they closed it for the winter then drove all the way across the uh, country uh, along the Canadian border down the um, big flat uh, shield section of New York uh, on the outside of the Adirondacks into uh, Syracuse, you know, Rochester, um, Buffalo area. Went, uh, kept going west from there, made it to Detroit, spent a little while in Rochester um, right outside of Detroit went up into the Upper Peninsula. That's where I got my first snow on this uh, vehicle as it's currently set up that you can actually drive through. Then uh, I made my way out to Chicago. From Chicago, I drove uh, back down through a lot of the Midwest. So I hit up um, Indianapolis, uh, Cincinnati, uh, Columbus, uh, Dayton, Pittsburgh, then I went uh, south and I uh, went through um, the uh, West Virginia area to, um, to, do, to, to do some nice camping in Monongahela National uh, Forest, which is really cool. Shenandoah, Smokies, um, then started moving out west, uh, did some uh, mountain biking out in Bentonville, Arkansas as I was making my way out to the uh, Rocky Mountains. Met some friends over in uh, Steamboat, Colorado. Um, not after I, not not before I uh, did some four wheeling, some my first serious four wheeling, uh, in an area outside of Pueblo, um, Pueblo, Colorado. Um, went back up and um, uh, did Pikes Peak. Then um, then drove through Colorado, Moab, up into Utah, skied uh, Utah. 
into Wyoming uh, was in Jackson uh, right when COVID hit and they uh, closed down uh, that whole area, which really sucked because they had just gotten three feet of uh, fresh powder. It was awesome. Uh, I was able to ski the Tetons um, as I was uh, able to camp in the Tetons. I then went up to um, Yellowstone, uh, skied some more in there. Like I said, my favorite skiing probably of the whole uh, trip. So then I uh, went up into Glacier National Park and that's when things really started locking down. At that point I stayed a couple, uh, couple more days until they literally just kicked me out of the park. I drove straight home to New Jersey from there with only stopping to uh, sleep. I was able to hit uh, Roosevelt National Park, but unfortunately my plans normally would have taken me all the way out to the west coast, down the west coast, uh, and then out into Texas where I'd like uh, visit Big Bend uh, and stuff like that. So uh, that was my trip. Um, if you guys want to see any of the uh, um, photos and stuff that I posted on that, uh, I am on Instagram. My handle is 2JKA, that's number two. Um, although it'll probably be easier to search the uh, hashtag empowered by the Yet, which is, you know, short for the nickname Yeti uh, of this vehicle. Because once you start driving, uh, you know, a four-wheel drive vehicle like this, it's just, it's empowering. It, it's, it's funny and it's strange, but you know, you drive this around and you feel like you can just go anywhere. So I was empowered by the Yet. I was able to take my uh, my uncle along with that uh, big whole trip all the way out there, um, as long as his memory was staying with this vehicle. So um, now that I'm done with that, my plans are going to be to tear the whole back out, put uh, the rear seats back in, um, probably switch uh, this out for this uh, factory soft top, um, and then long time down the line get one of those uh, Ursa Minor uh, pop-up uh, cabs that you can go on here so that I can use this as um, a little bit more versatile of a vehicle because I don't have to sleep inside of it. I can sleep in it with that pop-up. Uh, this will get a big drawer that will keep some of the uh, recovery equipment and stuff that I would, uh, normally have like hanging on the bags uh, inside there or underneath that one bit and have the compressor inverter set up in a bit of a cabinet that'll uh, also take this subwoofer. So uh, with that being said, guys, thanks for watching. John, thank you for taking the time today to give us a full tour of your Jeep Wrangler Unlimited four-door uh, yep. Rubicon and uh, how you utilize it for car camping. This is a new type of thing for our viewers, at least. Uh, I haven't really covered any car camping, although I have done it myself before. Well, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I'd love it. We'll see you soon.